Kucha, can I have a cup of Kucha? Can I have a cup? Ready, 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 ready. What do you want? On a Kucha. You want what? Kucha. What do you want? Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Doing something a little bit different for you today, but I'll probably be incorporating more of these cooking, how to, what I do videos. I have a little helper with me also this is usually how I spend most of my time getting anything done is with a child attached to me I am a huge fan of baby wearing specifically my Tulas I've got two of them I have this standard Tula for the little guy and then I have a toddler Tula for my bigger guy and me and my husband love them they keep us mobile and active we're able to go for walks and do a lot of things we wouldn't normally be able to do with four little boys in tow. So it makes our lives a lot, a lot easier. So honestly, he would probably would have been fine just playing on the floor while I did this, but I got the Tula out just to make sure I had it in case I needed it. And he saw it and immediately wanted to go up. So yeah, what are you gonna do? Today for you guys, I am doing my kombucha brew. If you watched my uh, Costco haul video, you saw that I brew my own kombucha. I had to get a couple jugs of water to do that. Are you gonna mess with my hair? I had to get a couple of jugs of water to do that. So kombucha is a, a probiotic tea. It's a fermented tea full of awesome probiotics. So inst instead of taking a probiotic pill or doing like kefir, a fermented yogurt or something like that, we drink kombucha. We also used it to replace sodas completely. I used to drink a lot of sodas. I'm, I will admit I was a big fan of Coke and Pepsi and would have them on hand a whole lot. But since we've radically changed our diet, we've pulled out sodas completely. I haven't had, I think I can count on my hand how many sodas I've had this year. I'm very proud of myself. But I do like to indulge uh, with kombucha and it's a healthy substitute. It has a little bit of a fizz to it, which I like. The longer you let it sit, it can get more of that like vinegary tart taste. That's actually why I am brewing right now. I usually wait for my kombucha brew to get a little bit lower, but this has been sitting a while and it's gotten a really, really vinegary taste. And so I'm ready to go ahead and start a new brew. So this is what I brew in. This is um, a two gallon um, dispenser and I'll make sure and put links below where I get it. I also replaced the spigot on it with a stainless steel spigot because it comes with a plastic one and I don't like to do plastic with my kombucha. So starting out my kombucha, I have about four cups of water that I'm bringing to boil right now. It takes maybe mm, five to 10 minutes to get that going. And then what I do is put in 10 bags of organic tea. I get this at Sprouts. Um, it's a really good price there. You can use black tea, white tea, or green tea for brewing kombucha. I've always just used black tea. Uh, I've been thinking about experimenting with some other tea flavors, but for now, this is what I've had. I've had this for like months brewing my kombucha. This pack lasted me forever. So this is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna put in 10 tea bags. My water, my water just came to boil. Perfect timing. Five. There's five. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Putting in five right there. Get five more. Five. All right. So four cups of water and ten tea bags does sound a little crazy, but you'll get what I'm doing here in a little bit when I get closer to adding in my kombucha to my brew. You will understand, I promise. There is method to the madness. Sugar. I like to use organic sugar cane from Costco. I got this giant bag a couple months ago. It's lasted me forever. I love it. I specifically got it for brewing kombucha, but of course if I need sugar and anything else, I'll use it. Organic sugar cane. And it's important um, to use 
all natural organic when you're brewing kombucha because it is a probiotic which means it's a bacteria you want it to not have any kind of contamination in it whatsoever so I use all natural organic ingredients and um, purified water also when I'm doing this because I want to make sure nothing crazy parabens all that nasty GMO stuff gets into my kombucha so I like to add my sugar while this is nice and hot so it can get melted. And I brew two gallons of kombucha. So for every gallon of kombucha, I do a cup of sugar. So this is gonna take two cups of sugar in this tea. One. Two. Um, I, again, it's, it's a, I know it's a lot, hi baby. Okay. <laughs> Little people everywhere, always. Don't worry about all the sugar that I just put into that. It's not like we're drinking super sugary tea. I'll explain that to you more. Let me stir this up though so it doesn't all rest at the bottom of my pan. Make sure it gets all melted in. Get my tea bags over to the side so I can stir this all in. So while I let the sugar melts into my tea really good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the kombucha that I have left and then the SCOBY. So the ingredients are pretty, pretty, are very, not pretty, very minimal for what you need for kombucha. The biggest ingredient you need is this SCOBY right here. So this SCOBY is the living bacteria that ferments this tea. And what this, this SCOBY does is it eats up all that sugar that's inside my tea so it's not going to be just super sugary tea this scoby actually eats that sugar and then produces the good bacteria back into it so scoby is key for making kombucha i got my scoby locally from a friend i have a lot of crunchy hippie friends in the area that brew their own kombucha and it's really easy to get a scoby from someone locally because they they replicate themselves obviously it's a living uh, bacteria so how we know that something is alive is it consumes and it reproduces so it consumes that sugar it reproduces it reproduces and how it reproduces is in layers a, a new layer every time and it puts a fresh layer on top you actually have to peel your scoby um, probably like once a month to keep it thinner and not this super stacked like pancake thing and when you peel it, you can use that peel to start a new brew or give it to somebody else to start a brew. And that's one of my goals with this too, is to uh, have a second brew going. So while we're waiting for one, we have another one that we can get to. So what I'm going to do though is pour this out so I can add in the rest of my, my new brew for the bucha. Again, I don't like to use plastic or anything like that, so I have this glass bowl that I've cleaned with hot water real well and dry. You also wanna make sure that nothing that you're using is hot, so like don't pull anything hot out of the dishwasher, or I'll show you what we have to do with this hot tea right here. It's a living organism and heat can kill it, so you have to be, you have to be nice to it. I call it my baby bucha. You have to be nice to this thing. So I'm gonna pour the kombucha in here. Yeah. And the SCOBY is just going to plop out on top of it. Whoop. Whoa, gosh. There was a little more extra in there than I thought there was. Did you see that? Did you see all that go down my counter? I'm so graceful, y'all. I'm so good at this. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to make a giant mess in here, y'all. I'm just, I'm a hot mess. So this, uh... This stuff, this extra kombucha down at the bottom, there's nothing wrong with any of this. I'm just gonna leave it in here. It'll help start the brew. To start a new brew, you have to have two cups of starter kombucha and then the SCOBY. So this is well over two cups, obviously, but that's why I usually wait for it to get a little bit lower before I brew another one. However, like I said earlier, this has gotten really, really tart and vinegary tasting, so I'm ready to start a new brew. So the tea and everything has been sitting plenty long. I'm gonna give it another good stir. Make sure the sugar is all melted in and put in with it real well because I hate when I pour it out and then there's like that meltedly caramely sugar that just like stays in the pan. Make sure it all gets in there. 
Are you playing with my hair? And this is why I have short hair. You can pull on that all day, honey. It is not gonna bother me. Yeah. Beauty of mommy short hair. All right, so I'm gonna pour this hot tea. Oh, and make sure your spigot is closed. I've done that before. I've been cleaning it and had the spigot and we've gotten a hot tea all over the floor. So this could be a lot worse, y'all. This is, I'm doing really good. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour this hot tea. Thank you. Make sure all the sugar gets in. See that sugar still at the bottom. I do the best I can. <laughs> Baby stretch. Okay. See in there all that sugar. Super hot. So I told you before, we cannot add a SCOBY to something that is super hot because it was it will kill it. So now is when I add the rest of my water to cool it off. And this is just room temperature um, purified drinking water. I just grabbed this at the store. And I'm gonna add this in. And it is going to start cooling it off for me. Now typically I get two good gallons in this, but like I said, I didn't wait for my starter batch to get down as low as I normally do. So I'm not gonna use as much water because I really don't want to, I really don't want to make the same mistake I did pouring that in and pour that on here and have this all overflow. That is not going to be good. Messy, 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 messy. All right, let's see. I think that's about where it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. You think so? Okay, so I'm going to keep using the same spoon that I was. Stir this all around. You guys can already see the difference between the new batch that I'm brewing and the old batch. The old batch is a lot lighter, the new batch is darker. That's kind of how you'll know how your brew is coming along. It'll start to turn that lighter, like a peach color, like a golden color, I guess. Okay. Ooh, this is still a little warm. Okay, so because I haven't, because I didn't use as much water, this batch is still a little warm and I don't want to add my SCOBY to it yet. I'm going to give it just a hot second because I don't want to kill my precious little SCOBY. I love it so much. So give me a second and I'm going to wait for this to get to be a little bit more room temperature. The magic of vlogging. And now it's all cooled off and I'm down a baby if you've noticed. <laughs> We ate some food and watched a Netflix show, and now he's okay on the floor. So let me wrap this all up for you guys really quick. So this is now room temperature. It's not as warm or hot as it was. I'm gonna add in my SCOBY and the rest of the bucha. Oh gosh. Such a mess. All right, I'm gonna make sure this doesn't flop in. Bam. You want it to flow to the top like that. That's exactly how you want it to look. Oh my gosh, I've made such a mess. our kombucha around four to five days so basically what you have to do is you have to let it sit and let that scoby eat up all that sugar and produce all that good bacteria the best way to figure out how you like your your kombucha is to maybe just try a little bit of it every day and you'll be able to tell it'll start tasting less and less 
like a very, very sweet tea and more like a kombucha brew, and it'll get um, a fizziness to it too, almost like it's carbonated, which that's what I like the most. You can't cover it because it is a living bacteria. You have to um, let it breathe. So I just have this little dish towel that I put over the top of it and rubber band to keep all the bugs and debris and things from getting inside of it. So I'm gonna move this over to my counter, let it sit for a few days, and then we will have fresh homebrewed kombucha ready to drink. I water it down a little bit for the kids, but it's really good stuff. It's better than spending three bucks a bottle at the Whole Foods store. Let me know if you guys are gonna start your own. I would love uh, to know that, that my video helped you out a little bit. I think everybody should drink kombucha. It's really, really good for you. Again, it's a good, healthy probiotic. And if you need any help finding a SCOBY, I'll put some links below where you can get some online or some tips for growing your own. And please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. All right, guys. See y'all.